morning, everyone. I'm Julia Borston here for Tech Check, and I'm joined now by Nader Al Nader Al Naji, better known as Diamond Hands. I should just call you Diamond Hands, the founder of BitCloud, and now the founder of a new venture called Deso. Nader, thank you so much for talking to us this morning. Thank you so much for having me, Julia. So I have so many questions for you. I want to hear about your new venture. I want to hear about why you've decided to reveal your true identity um, since you were going by Diamond Hands for so long. But let's start with the news of the day. China making a bold move effectively to ban all cryptocurrency. What do you make of this move? And what do you think is actually going to happen? Yeah, it's it's very, very interesting what's happening just in cryptocurrency in general. You know, I think what we're seeing is that uh, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum and the other blockchains uh, are really creating what I believe to be a lot of innovation uh, in the financial sector. And they're really starting to disrupt existing players. And as you know, when you disrupt existing players, even when it's beneficial, um, you know, that, that causes some kerfuffle. And so I think it's a good thing. It's, it's showing how positively disruptive every uh, all this whole space is. I mean, it's a good thing in that it, it indicates just how powerful crypto is. But at the same time, if China bans cryptocurrency, we've seen some of these <laughs> Uh, you know, some of these different coins really take a, a leg lower and move dramatically lower this morning. Could it have a huge impact on the whole ecosystem? Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. So I've been in crypto since 2010, 2013. Uh, and every time uh, crypto, crypto starts going up or, or anything, China bans crypto. It's actually kind of a meme in the space. So when I hear China bans crypto, it's like, oh, okay, cool. That's like the third time I've heard that this year, you know? Um, and so maybe this time is different. Obviously it could be, but um, you know, when I hear China bans crypto, I always say, okay, well, let's actually dig a bit deeper. And I, I, I'm not, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so. Okay, so the question really is, is this time different? So yeah. um, let's talk about you and your background. Um, Natter, you were known on the internet as Diamond Hands. Um, you've been in this crypto space for so long. Why did you decide to reveal your true identity, uh, the, the, the Superman Clark Kent situation here now, mm -hmm. as opposed to any time before? Yeah, that's a great question, Julia. And so maybe just a little bit of context for your viewers. So um, what we announced this week is DSO, uh, short for Decentralized Social. And it's a blockchain that's custom built from the ground up to power social applications. So we talked about how Bitcoin and Ethereum are disrupting the financial system and they're disrupting banks and, uh, and exchanges. Um, but really, uh, there hasn't been a blockchain yet that's capable of being used to build social applications. And so DSO is the first blockchain of its kind for that. And that's really exciting because it opens up a whole new category for disruption for blockchain technology, not to move us from just disrupting the financial sector to now disrupting social media, which is obviously very big. So that's DSO the blockchain. And then uh, to your question on my, my pseudonymity, uh, I've been known on the internet as Diamond Hands. And I was known specifically for launching an app called BitCloud. Um, and BitCloud was actually the first app, it's really just a prototype, that's built on the DSO blockchain. So it uses a blockchain, the DSO blockchain, as its backend, and it has uh, new interesting features that can move us from an ads-based business model, which is what traditional social media uh, is typically built on, to one that's based on investing in each other and investing in creators, can be, make creators much more money, and also create a tighter relationship with their followers. So it's very exciting. So DSO is actually, has always been part of BitCloud, and now you're offering it as a separate tool. Yeah, actually what happened, which is very interesting, is we launched BitCloud as a prototype. We just wanted a few hundred users. We literally had password protected links and everything. But what happened is it blew up and major celebrities got hold of it, started joining. So we have Tyga, Antonio Brown, Diplo Blau, a lot of people with accounts up through, they have accounts on the blockchain through BitCloud, this app we just intended to launch as a prototype. And then the other crazy thing is over 100 developers started building on the blockchain, even though it didn't have a name. It was like we literally didn't announce even the blockchain part of it, but they found it through the Block Explorer, which was which was public, a lot of public things. They started building on it. Um, and so this ecosystem kind of got built overnight, um, you know, when we weren't really intending it to. And, and so that's kind of why we're, we're out here to give the blockchain uh, its own launch and, and, and to say this is now no longer in beta mode. You can build on it and we're going to disrupt social media in a very positive way. Very interesting. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of how DSO works, because I'm going to ask you to walk us through that, I want to just get a little bit more on BitCloud, sort of why you founded that in the first place and what you've learned from that. I mean, there are these questions about identity theft and how you make sure that's a secure platform. But tell us about that initial idea, which has since spawned the second business. 
Of course. So, so just for context, I've been working for over two and a half years on the blockchain side of all of this, which is that we now call DSO. Uh, and so the really interesting part of this whole thing is that there is a blockchain that for the first time can power social media applications at scale, namely the DSO blockchain. And to begin testing and iterating on that blockchain, about six months ago, uh, I, with, with my team, launched an app that just had as its backing the, the block, the DSO blockchain, that was BitCloud. Um, and that app, was, uh, which is BitCloud, um, had a lot of interesting features. It allowed you to invest in uh, other people, uh, which is something that's never really been done in social media before. But because we built it on a blockchain, we can do what are called money native features, like investing in, in each other. Um, and it allowed you to buy and sell NFTs and it allowed you to do tips that are actually tied to content. So there were just so many new and interesting features that I think even though we just had it as a prototype to 100 people, um, it just kind of spread and, and went viral. And, um, and so, uh, but really it's, we're here for the technology, for the, for the DSO blockchain, the backing uh, that powers all of this and all the new apps that people are going to build, not just BitCloud. And so you want DSO to be the building blocks, the bricks and mortar of other social apps that are all about being based on, on crypto and not having an ad supported model. Or That's 100% 100 right, Julia. And it's already happening, by the way. So Flick is an app. It actually, so the mobile apps, if you want to use the, uh, the DSO blockchain, you don't use BitCloud on mobile, you use Flick. Uh, which is an app that's created by the former uh, co-founder and former uh, CEO of FanDuel, uh, Nigel Eccles. There's also Pulse, which is backed by social capital to, uh, building on the blockchain. So there are so many apps, uh, over 100 other apps other than BitCloud today that are really exciting and getting traction. Again, using um, this new business model that's based on a blockchain rather than based on ads. Interesting. So walk us through, though, how you would how you would sign up for DSO. I mean, you do have in the tens of thousands of users, I believe it's 30 over 30,000 monthly active users. How does DSO work and how could I say sign up for it? Absolutely. So um, there's a list of apps on DSO.org that you can go in and look at and play with. Uh, there's everything from uh, social experiences that are similar to Twitter to NFT specific experience, so experiences. So Polygram is actually uh, an NFT browser for the DSO blockchain. Uh, but you could go to DSO.org and look at the list of apps. Uh, you can also go to bitclout.com, uh, which is uh, still one of the bigger apps uh, that's built on the DSO blockchain. Just because it was first, that's not going to be the case for long. Developers are going to uh, take over and, and have much better apps, I hope, than, than the prototype that we launched. But so then you get, if once you sign up for one of those apps, you get 10 to $20, which you can invest in people's social tokens. Walk us through that investing process, why you want it to be about investing in others as opposed to just, say, interacting. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, you mentioned anyone who goes to any DSO app actually gets uh, between 10 and $20 free to, to start playing around. Uh, and there's uh, new ways to monetize that don't exist on existing uh, social networks. Uh, so um, the one that you're mentioning is what we call social tokens or creator coins. Um, and so you can have a coin associated with your profile that your followers can buy and sell. Uh, and what's really exciting about that is we're finding that creators can make so much more uh, money when people are able to invest in, in each other. Uh, and not only that, but it also creates a tighter relationship with their fans. All of it not even being based on ads, yet it's like 10 to 100 times uh, better for the creator. And that's just one of the features that we launched. There's also what we call social NFTs. So you can take a post or a piece of art and you can sell it as what's called an NFT. It's a big thing in crypto right now. Uh, creators have made over, like many creators have made over $100,000 just on the NFTs alone. Uh, hundreds to, to millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars on the social tokens. Um, and then, of course, we also have what we call diamonds, which are like social tips. Uh, and uh, if you just compare diamonds as a tipping feature to what other platforms have, I think you'll kind of see how it's much better when you do things on a blockchain. It's much smoother, smoother, cleaner. It makes more sense and makes more money for the creator. Yeah. And so tell me why you see this as a necessary alternative to what Facebook is doing. Yeah. So the existing uh, social players. So today uh, we basically have three companies. Uh, that control the vast majority of what we see and do online. Um, and the reason for that is they have a monopoly on content, right? So if I'm a developer and I want to build on, on uh, Facebook's data, I can't because they'll never let me. They have an ads-driven business model and they need to control everything for them to be able to make money off of that business model. But when you switch from content being a monopoly to content being a utility, which is what happens when you use a blockchain to store the content rather than a company that, that has what's called a data mode, 
uh, you can now create uh, not only an open ecosystem that anybody can build on top of and get much more competition and innovation around the apps and around discourse generally on the internet, but you also have a new business model that instead of being based on ads can be based on investment or directly uh, uh, monetizing uh, the, the creator. And it's just orders of magnitude better for the creator while also creating a tighter and more engaging relationship with the fan. So it's really, you know, when you, when you start look, putting data on the blockchain rather than a private company, you get this growth uh, that's just really, really exciting. So practically speaking, though, what Facebook has is unprecedented scale. It, it just you can't compete with Facebook scale. So my question is, are, are you and your companies and the companies that live on top of that platform going to be trying to compete with Facebook and lure over those creators? Or do you see what you're doing is targeting a more niche audience and a different group of creators? Well, I, I, I do think that it is fairly disruptive. So Facebook has scale on a, a, mon, a monopolized pool of content. Uh, what DSO is doing is creating an open pool of content that anyone can build on. And what's really interesting is when you have an open pool of content that anyone can build on, suddenly every developer all over the world can start creating social applications in a way that they can't do today. And that can create the economy of scale needed to actually, for the first time, be able to compete with the centralized monopolistic platforms. We can unlock the, the ingenuity of anybody anywhere in the world. The best researchers in the world can build models on the, the, the DSO data in a way that they can't on the, the closed models. And by the way, you can also track the spread of misinformation better, so it's better from a moderation standpoint. So really, when you have an open uh, utility-like model for content rather than a monopolistic model, you are able to build an economy of scale that uses the ingenuity of the entire world, not just people at one company. And that's why it's exciting, why we have the potential to, to eventually compete. So you're very excited about the potential for DSO and all of the, the apps and, and products that live on top of it to draw people over from the likes of Facebook. But what's to keep Facebook from adopting some of these same principles and perhaps copying some of the features that you're talking about? Yeah, well, so the really interesting thing about DSO is it's extremely disruptive uh, in the sense that uh, it is not an, it is, uh, not an ads driven business model, but rather it is uh, based on transactions or based on investment, as I mentioned before. So for an existing company like Facebook or Twitter to adopt the model that DSO has, they would make their advertisers very, very, very upset. Uh, and, you know, it, they basically have to decide, OK, we don't care about ads anymore, which is really hard. Right. And it's probably better for their shareholders that they keep doing what they're doing, uh, you know, and then just, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what happens in the long run, but maybe they build on DSO eventually and they start they start uh, uh, kind of doing that. And they'll make tons of money doing that, by the way. Uh, you know, it, that's the beauty of open content is it grows the pie and everybody makes more money, potentially including the existing incumbents, uh, you know, uh, just because it's more efficient. But there's no doubt that right now, everyone in the social space is looking at crypto as well as blockchain. I mean, Twitter just announced that you'll be able to tip, you can pay, make payments um, with cryptocurrencies on its platform. What do you make of that news? And what could that mean for your companies going forward? Absolutely. I mean, look, I think it's great that the people are innovating on, on uh, creators making money. That's really why we're all here. Uh, that said, you know, um, Twitter and and the other social networks are... are uh, Pretty, you know, I think they're bound in terms of what they can do uh, by not having essentially a blockchain as the core backend. Like when you start from a blockchain, you can just do things with money, with monetization that you can't do when you start in a centralized way. Uh, and again, the, the social tokens and the uh, social NFTs are two examples of that. But just I, I challenge people, go compare Twitter's tipping to bitcloud.com, which by the way is a prototype app. It's not intended, like it's not mainstream thing. Just compare them and you can immediately see how much smoother, cleaner, when you build on a blockchain first, uh, what it looks like. So. But do you, does this mean you in anticipate Twitter moving more in this direction? Or do you think it's just good that Twitter is getting people used to transacting in crypto, used to thinking about blockchain? I think it's amazing that they're, that they're, they're looking at this. I think it's amazing that they're, they're moving in that direction. Um, again, I think for them to do something like what DSO is doing would be extremely disruptive to their existing business model. Uh, I really, to, to be clear, I'm here to help the world. I want to make the world a better place. If they were, if they did decide, okay, I want to leave my business model behind and do this, that would be a great thing for the world. I'm very happy that we instigated that. Excellent, excellent, great for everybody. But they'll probably build it on DSO because I do think they'll make more money doing that than if they started their own chain from scratch. 
Uh, but you know, that's again, that's all hypothetical. You know, this is well, well, world. we'll end on that hypothetical <laughs> note. Nader Al Nadi, <laughs> better known as Diamond Hands. Thank you for joining us, founder of BitCloud and now DSO. We look forward to hearing what comes next uh, out of these ventures. We really appreciate it.